Welcome back to Free Media. I'm Amber Duke. And I'm Robbie Suave. Hillary Clinton recently sounded the alarm on unmoderated social media, warning that without proper oversight, we lose total control, a stance that has sparked a heated debate about the risks of prioritizing content moderation over free speech. Let's watch. Uh, we should be, uh, in my view, repealing something called Section 230, which gave um, you know, platforms on the internet uh, immunity because they were thought to be just pass-throughs, that they shouldn't be judged for the content that is posted. But we now know that that was an overly simple view, that if the platforms, whether it's Facebook or Twitter X or uh, Instagram or TikTok, whatever they are, if they don't moderate uh, and monitor the content, uh, we lose total control. And it's not just the social and psychological effects, it's real harm. Hillary Clinton wasn't the only top Democrat raising the alarm in the name of misinformation. At a recent World Economic Forum panel, former U.S. Senator John Kerry singled out the First Amendment as a significant obstacle in the government's fight against disinformation. Kerry, who served as the Biden administration's climate envoy, pointed out that free speech protections complicate efforts to manage the spread of false information. Boo hoo. Let's watch. People go and their people self-select where they go for their news or for their information. And then you just get into a vicious cycle. So it's really, really hard, much harder to build consensus today than at any time in the 45, 50 years I've been involved in this. And, and uh, you know, there's a lot of discussion now about how you curb uh, those entities uh, in order to guarantee that you're going to have, you know, some accountability on facts, et cetera. But look, if people go to only one source and the source they go to is sick and, uh, you know, has an agenda and they're putting out disinformation, uh, our First Amendment stands as a major block to the ability to be able to just, you know, hammer it out of existence. So what you need, what we need is to is to win the ground, win the right to govern. It's not win the war of ideas, it's win the right to govern, win the right to power so we can hammer these outlets that we don't like out of existence. Yeah, I saw some people who are, you know, otherwise I agree with on some things, free speech supporters saying this clip was blown out of proportion because he wasn't saying to get rid of the First Amendment. But he, winning the right to govern, what, what do you mean by that? He, he's saying that the First Amendment stops us from doing the kind of governance we want to do. So I, I did, reading between the lines, see that he was wanting to do something about that. And again, it could be something short of like repealing the First Amendment, which is obviously never gonna happen. But Tim Walls, for instance, has done this classic conflation on free speech, but saying that hate speech and misinformation um, are not included under free speech, which is constitutionally incorrect. Uh, hate speech is very famously protected by the First Amendment. There hasn't been any separate jurisprudence on misinformation, but we know <laughs> basically for certain it would get treated the same way that our current Supreme Court would not carve out some misinformation um, exception. So uh, and then going back to what Hillary Clinton said, it's so key that line, we lose control. Well, who is we? We is Democratic and Republican political leaders and federal bureaucrats and more traditional media organizations that are resentful of the ability of anyone to critique them on social media and there's nothing they can do about it because of the tremendous liability protections that allow us to do the show we're doing right now, allow us to do Rising, allow us to do any number of other media projects to spout off because the companies don't have to worry that Twitter is going to get sued if you or I have some crazy tweet. That's what makes the whole thing possible, and it's what Hillary Clinton's and John Kerry's hate. It's what they hate because it makes criticism of them so much easier. And also, they don't mean it when they say that their number one goal is to protect or save democracy because democracy doesn't exist without free speech. People have to have access to information so that they can make an informed decision when they go to the ballot box. And if one party or one group of elite bureaucrats controls the flow of information, then you don't really have a democracy, right? Uh, so all of their blustering and their bloviating about how in this election, if we don't vote the right way, then democracy is going to be over. Uh, maybe, but probably not from the person that you think is going to take it away because you're the ones that want to limit people's ability to have some kind of agency over their own lives and over the candidates that they're voting for. 
I think ever since um, Elon Musk acquired um, X, and X has become a more um, friendlier place for conservative or dissident viewpoints, I think now it's it's kind of become clearer to many elected Republicans that they needed to back off some of this um, uh, commonalities they were finding with Democrats on specifically the Section 237. And I know you and I have some different views on antitrust and things like that. But like I've long criticized the Ted Cruz's and the Josh Hawley's and even Donald Trump himself who was like repeal Section 230. Like, that's what Elizabeth Warren wants to do this. Amy Klobuchar and Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton and John Kerry want to do this because they know that if you got rid of this, it would make much less possible, much less likely, a large category of speech that is outside their control. And I think that was very much forgotten by many Republicans in their understandable frustrations with a lot of the moderation on social media that we now know was largely done at the behest of the federal government itself and was not actually freely chosen in a marketplace by these companies. So I'm hoping there's been a, a backing off of this strategy of working with Democrats to achieve something that is going to be ruinous for free speech. Yeah, and I think there has been, and I definitely have more of an understanding of why they wanted to uh, put take Section 230 protections away from these social media companies. And it was because at the time they were all making editorial decisions about whose content was allowed on the platform. And it was all going in one direction. Now, luckily, you have Elon Musk owning Twitter slash X, and the content moderation is about less uh, partisan mm -hmm. decision making. It's in terms of like, OK, you can't make threats against people. Um, you can't. Uh, uh, I guess well, you can post pornography. You can't post like. No, you, can, you can post pornography. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but you can't. Twitter post allows still allows pornography. Yes. It's, it's a I weird I said, outlier. I thought I said media. can, but maybe I said can't. But then you can't post like graphic violence yeah. stuff, you know, without um, going through like certain hoops or whatever. So there's restrictions on what you can post, but none of it is related to like the underlying political yeah. nature of your content. And so in that case, Twitter isn't acting like a publisher anymore. It is acting more of like a digital marketplace of ideas, which is what people want it to be. But that is a very precarious position when you basically have one billionaire standing between yeah. the federal government and you as the only person willing to keep open a platform for well, some semblance of free speech. But I, I wouldn't. I don't think he's the only person because even look at Mark Zuckerberg. I mean, he now regrets a lot of the decisions. Yeah, I guess Facebook the question made. is if you think that's sincere, though. I well, maybe I'm naive. I think I think there's a certain level of sincerity. I mean, it's sincerity mixed with I think he understands that um, alienating or pissing off half the country is not a good business strategy. Yeah. Um, I, I think he understands that there will never be enough. Uh, moderation of content to satisfy the Hillary Clintons of the world, so why would you even try? And I think he recognizes that a lot of the steps that the CDC and the FBI pushed Facebook to take were actually fundamentally mistaken, were, were based on faulty premises, were either I involving uh, information that ought to be subject to debate, or was just flat out wrong, as is the case of these are Russian bots and all that kind of stuff. I mean, they he felt pushed to do the Hunter Biden decision because of bad intelligence from the FBI. So I, I think there is a little bit this like you 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 live and you learn and um, I I hope based on his commentary that they would reach kind of different decisions. I mean it's clear that he's does not want to be viewed as as so attached or loyal to democratic political project um, as he was before and uh, and so this is a little bit of a market correction taking place. I hope so. I mean he stopped the Zuckbucks program that he did in 2020, which is good. And then I also think though that there's an element of okay, I think Trump might get reelected and I wanna make sure that I'm not the target of mm -hmm. potential social media regulation or big tech regulation. If the Republicans get into office, I wanna make sure that they know that I'm kind of ostensibly on their side. So it's sort of a, I'll believe it when I see it, I wanna see the actions match the words kind mm -hmm. of thing. Um, but I mean, still, the idea that our our ability to speak online is subject to the whims of like two or three rich people is not my ideal scenario. Yeah. Um, I wish that there was an ability for there to be more competition in social media platforms, and that's simply not the case right now. Yeah, I think the, but I, I do think the recognition that so much of the moderation was being outsourced to or done because of government decision making has changed a lot of people's minds about what the what the problem was and where this is coming from and I think we're just all paying 
you know, tracking it much more closely. And, and now, unfortunately, we did not get a favorable Supreme Court decision in uh, Murphy v. Missouri, which would have totally shut it down. And I fully expect that the next administration is going to you yeah. know, try to fire up again a, l a lot of the same stuff. So, And I think the RFK Jr. case might make it there because yeah. they said that uh, the epidemiologist didn't have standing but I know a lower court ruled that RFK Jr. did, so yeah. that could work its way up and maybe they will actually hear the merits of the case as opposed to dismissing it. I'm, I'm hopeful for that. Right, and what I would like to see is, is something, the, the, if there's gonna be regulation, it should really be, in my view, not on the tech companies to do something, but it should just, it should be, a restriction on the government's messaging to the companies. Right, like, like in, you don't get to email a content right. monitor at Twitter and say, we think this tweet is wrong, please take it down. Exactly, which is almost <laughs> like an internal, you know, government police yourself thing, which maybe was nothing we can ever expect to actually happen, but that would be ideal. More free media right after this.